Hello, I'm Amanda Fowler of Inspiring in Kin. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the UK and welcome to my craft room. In today's video we're going to be making this box. This is the fourth in my series of projects using the Stampin' Up! gift bag punch board. Now I know in the title it says gift bag punch board but I always like to find different things that we can make using one particular type of product and that's why I designed this box for you. So what you're going to need are two pieces of uh, paper or cardstock. One piece which will make the base which is 7 inches by 12 inches and then the lid is made by a piece that's 3 inches by 12 inches. You'll need some ribbon, just open this up you need some ribbon that coordinates and two pieces of cardstock measuring two and a half inches square. Now this is only if you're going to be using paper for your box, it's going to reinforce the base. Um, if you're using cardstock then you won't need these pieces. This designer series paper is actually called English Garden and I just want to quickly show you the patterns. This is, is the pattern that I love the most. Um, it's, it's beautiful, you could frame it. So that's the reverse. We have this side which has the little bumblebees and some pink flowers. Some tiny flowers and pink stripes. Spots and leaves, like that one too. Then you've got multicoloured flowers and a blue sort of chevron pattern. And then this is the uh, paper that I'm using for the lid, which is the crumb cake stripe and yellow flowers. Now the great thing about Stampin' Up! Design Series paper is in the pack you get two sheets of each. So you can have one for putting away and stroking and one for cutting up. So um, great, great thing that Stampin' Up! does there. It, it caters to us the hoard paper. So what I'm going to do is start with the lid. And this is the three inch by 12 inch piece. Now this particular paper and this one, there isn't a right way up and a wrong way up. So we don't really need to worry about the pattern, but if you can just see here, the, let me turn this around so you can see, the piece that we're actually punching out form for the lid, the actual top of the box. So you just need to make sure that the pattern is going to be going the way you want it to. So for the lid, when you put the paper in, make sure that the pattern that you want to see is the right way up. And then for the base of the box, make sure it's going down, it's, it's facing down. I hope that kind of makes sense. If you haven't got a pattern on your paper or like these papers, it doesn't actually matter which way up they go, that's good. So it's, it's easy and straightforward. So pop your paper right into the back of the board and just score it all the way along and then you're going to line it up with the start line and the, the beaky bit at the top and you're going to punch and then you're just going to score on the S line. Now often when we're making bags and other things you would actually score on this gusset line and the side line. We're not doing that at all. We're just going to do four S lines as we go. So move your score line to the start line, punch, score on the S line again, punch, score on the S, punch, score on the S, and punch for a final time. So you can see here, you've got the four sections and then this is going to be your glue tab. You can do exactly the same with the lid. So pop it in to the back, score it all the way along first 
and then punch and score on the S line. This is such a quick box to make and it gives a really professional finish as well. It's really lovely. Punch again and your final punch. Okay, let's move those out of the way. So just reinforce all of your score lines And with, if you're using paper, always just go gently. The patterned paper has a white core and if you are too heavy handed, then you can actually tear it or crack the, the paper and you end up with white lines. So just go gently as you're, as you're scoring and folding. Now for both of the boxes, I'm just going to trim off the glue flap um, and just take that just on, a, on an angle there and the same on this one. And then I'm going to get my trusty Tombow out. And then if you fold the box, so you've got the glue flap just there, put your tumbo on, and then bring that down. You can actually line up oh, line up the box edge whilst it's flat. It's much easier to get the glue stuck down. So that's one. And then we're going to do the same with the base. And fold that down. Now this is, is the seam, so this is going to be the back of the box. So if I turn this the right way up, I know that this piece facing me is the back, so this piece is going to be the front of the box. So I actually want that flap to go down last when I'm gluing. So I'm going to push the two side bits in and put glue along here with that piece. Um, so that's the back and then this is the front flap. I'm just going to put my hand in from the base just to give it a bit, a bit of something to press against so it will actually stick. And then if you remember we've got these two two and a half inch pieces of card. So This is crumb cake because that coordinates. So I've just put plenty of Tombow on there. I'm just going to drop it inside. The box itself measures about two and three quarter inches. Mm. Actually, two and five eighths of an inch. So it's easier to go for two and a half and that will make sure that it will fit inside. I'm not sure whether the camera will be able to catch that, hopefully. And then with the base, just going to do exactly the same on the other side. It just means the box is, is quite a good size. It stands five and three quarter inches tall. So what it means is that you can put plenty of, of treats in there. And it, you're not going to run the risk of them falling out. Okay, so that's nice and sturdy on the base. We'll make the lid now. So again, find where the back is. So that's going to be the front. So fold those two pieces down. Actually those two pieces are going to go down first and then this way. Now it only just meets in the center. So just take your time when you're gluing it to make sure that you, you're pushing everything together so it meets, so you don't have any gaps. So just ease it together. Yeah, 
There we go. It will stick. Perfect. Okay. Right. So let's just pop that lid on there. If you just you're just flexing the sides just a little bit, although you've scored it on exactly the same lines, it just sits and it sits really snugly. Oh, look really pretty. And then I'm going to use some of this stitched satin ribbon. Um, I don't know whether you spied this piece of washi tape. I always have washi tape on my ribbons. It stops them unraveling um, because I keep all my ribbons on the spool because it's easier to, to tie. Um, I keep a piece of washi tape there and then it just sticks it down and I don't have to worry about pins or other things like that. Right, so I'm going to do a sort of parcel wrapping with the ribbon. So I'm going to pull it over the top, cross it over at the base, making sure that it sits nicely. Crossing it over at the base and then bringing it up to the top. And now I'm going to try and tie a bow, which may go well, may go horribly wrong. We will see. I consider myself bow impaired. I do struggle with bows. And over the years, I've, I've come up with all sorts of ingenious ways of, of tying bows and teaching people how to tie bows because in my classes it's one of the the things that people struggle with the most so i have got a series of um videos on bows knots and bows um that might help you too if you struggle with bows mm. this is not the prettiest bow but it's it's okay i can just spend a bit of time just fiddling with it there we go and then just trim those bits off there. So there you go. There you have it. A really quick box. Here's a Christmas version. This paper is Merry Moments. And this is, this is Baker's Twine and the Tree Punch. So if you want to know what those things are, obviously this was the English Garden paper. Thank you so much for joining me today. Remember to check out my other videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel and scroll down for more information of how you can purchase these products and see more inspiration on my blog. Take care. I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.